Good morning. Good morning. It is truly a joy to be here. And it's truly a, a wonderful day of celebration, not just for Temple, um, but for all of our connection. For when there is a baptism, it's not just the people in a certain congregation that celebrates, it's people from other congregations because we're connected and we can celebrate with one another these joy-filled moments when the family of God expands and multiplies. It's the connection with people in our conference and, and our conference staff who help us to be resourced to multiply disciples of Jesus Christ. It's the fact that laity around the connection and Gary's connection with them, we celebrate together every time there's a celebration in one place. Because of our connection, we celebrate all over. And it's a joy to be able to share with Stephen. Yes, I do remember that ordination service. That ordination service where I had the privilege and honor of laying hands on him in that ordination and connecting him to every other clergy person and every other congregation across the West Virginia Annual Conference, but then again across the world. For every time someone joins the church, every time someone was ordained, we multiply the family of God and the witness and the word of God, not just in our own backyards, but around the world. And that is something to truly celebrate. So it's great to be here and to be a part of this day and this celebration. This morning, I'd like to share with you uh, two passages of scripture, one from the Old Testament, from Isaiah 43, and I believe it fits in with Psalm 8. Um, hear these words from 43, beginning at Isaiah 43, beginning at the first verse. But now, thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Because you are precious in my sight, and honored, and I love you, I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west. I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. And then also seems appropriate to share the passage of scripture, a passage of scripture dealing with baptism this morning from Luke chapter 3 beginning at the 15th verse. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with 
fire. So, now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him bodily in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh, come, Holy Spirit, continue to be in this space and pour out your power upon us here today. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts together be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. On this Transfiguration Sunday, we gather here filled with expectation. We were drawn here today by the invitation. The invitation not just to one, but to all. Come, come, come and see. Come and be a part of what the Lord God is doing in our midst. As we come and, and gather here around Christ's table and the baptismal font, we come just as the believers in Jesus' time came to the River Jordan. We come with expectation, seeking connection, connection and reconnection with God and connection and reconnection with one another for the great, mysterious, and all-filled, transforming things that God is and will do in our lives and throughout all creation. We come this morning to be remembered, to be reconnected, brought together in a new way as the family shifts once more to recognize what God is doing in a new one entering the faith in new ones joining a faith community. We come to be transfigured into those together who will continue to shine God's light in this world. We come to be the very body of Christ from whom Wyatt and all the baptized We'll grow together. We'll become disciples of Christ. Disciples connected to expand the Christian family together. We've indeed been called from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south by the God who has created us and formed us called us and claimed us to be restored and renewed, brought together and remembered here by baptismal waters. Today is a God moment, a turning point, an intersection of heaven and earth. God who created us for God's glory has gathered us here today. In another time, in another place, God called and gathered. It was the time of John the Baptist. In John's movement, the wind of a new spirit was blowing through the nation. Expectant crowds came out from towns and villages to the wilderness of the Jordan to seek forgiveness, and there was the widespread belief that if the time ever came 
when the entire nation of Israel gathered together in connection and with the support of one another and truly repented before God, on that day, the Messiah would come. There were great expectations, and the people were working together in new ways, repairing rifts, offering apologies and forgiveness, making unconditional invitations, trusting in God's wisdom and not their own. In fact, they were repenting and repairing the way. Out of this, something even more astounding was happening. Baptism. As the chosen people, the Jews believed they did not need to be baptized. They were the children of Abraham and Sarah after all, already the faithful ones, the chosen ones. Only Gentiles confer converting to Judaism were baptized, for they were considered sinners outside of the covenant. But now, now thousands of Jews those believed already to be a part of the family and the faith community. These persons were now coming to the waters, confessing that they too were foreigners to the Holy One and in need of forgiveness. They were reaching out for a, a new beginning, a new connection with God, expecting something new. They were reaching out for a new beginning with each other. They were looking to be reunified and, and to reunite the family. They were expecting to hear and experience and walk together with the Messiah. What are your expectations? What are your expectations? It's an important question, for any teacher will tell you, you usually get what you expect. When the people in Jesus were baptized, and Jesus was praying, the heavens rip open, and through that opening come the flutter of wings, the spirit of the living God coming down on Jesus like a dove, as if he were being anointed and infused with spirit. A voice speaks, a voice Jesus may have never heard so distinctly before. The voice speaks a message that combines two pieces of Hebrew scripture. First, from Psalm 2, verse 7, which was understood to refer to the divine king to come. This is my beloved son. Second, from Isaiah 42, 1, which was understood to refer to a mysterious, unnamed figure, the suffering servant. With you, I am well pleased. Putting these two images together was the defining moment in Jesus' life. The voice expressed both who he was and how he was to be. Yes, you are the Messiah, but the way you will bring about the divine kingdom is through the power of suffering love. The road ahead for Christ would not be easy. It would involve sacrifice. Life together 
as the body of Christ, the church, is not and will not be easy. It involves sacrifice. What Jesus received at the Jordan was the greatest gift that God could give, the one thing Jesus needed to empower the rest of his ministry, affirmation. God baptized him, naming, claiming him as part of God's family with unconditional affirmation. The ministry hadn't even started yet. You are my cherished, loved child. I am extremely proud of you. Words before the first ministry ever happened. Jesus' baptism was an experience of God's claim on his life as a member of the family and an affirmation of being valued without condition. And this invigorated the rest of Jesus' life and work, the life and work to re member and reconnect the family that God so loves. Can remembering and celebrating our baptisms hold such possibility for living out for living out God's work in our lives? Martin Luther had a spiritual practice that I recommend to you. Every morning when he got up, he splashed water on his face and he said to himself, I am baptized. He did not say, I was baptized, but I am baptized. Every morning, Luther was recalling that his baptism was not a past event, only important to his parents who had presented him as an infant, but that his baptism was a present reality in which he existed in an intimate relationship with God. Luther was remembering that the watermark upon his forehead was a source of affirmation and energy, and that in any given day, at any given time, he should expect to see and to experience and to hear God's voice and to be about the work of connecting people with God and one another for the building of God's kingdom. I am baptized. In another time, in another place, John Wesley deeply understood the power of connection among the baptized. And he called people to get up and out of their pews and go out into the world gathering weekly in small groups where they rehearsed, I am baptized, where they asked one another, how is it with your soul? And who is it that you are sharing the word of God with so that they might be able to accept the gift of Jesus Christ in their own lives? He called the baptized, and challenged the people to grow in discipleship and spread God's word in the challenging circumstances of life. What in your thoughts, words, and deeds, what in your thoughts, words and deeds work to connect God's people and invite them into God's family. 
is God's watermark on your forehead, evident in the way in which you engage with others? Does the shimmer of your watermark invite people to know Jesus, to unconditionally invite people to be a part of God's family? Do you know the date of your baptism? Annually, you have an opportunity to celebrate your spiritual birth, to celebrate the unique giftedness that is you, and to affirm the special mission and gifts God has given to you for doing God's work. Through remembering your baptism, God says to you and to me, you have no idea how special you are. You matter infinitely. You know what the problem is here, don't you? We don't believe it. We don't believe in the specialness with which God has created and gifted us. We live as if that promise and that gift is not true. We live as if we believe God is lying and we have no expectations for experiencing the presence, the voice, or the direction of Christ. We live as if we believe people can't be transformed. Oh my, oh my, what does that say about our expectations for this world and the people around us? One of the things that makes me so angry is when our culture trains us to forget how special we are, how special we are as people made in the image of God. We live in a society that assaults people's self-esteem. It derides our physical appearance, insults our intelligence and gifts, judges and condemns us for past mistakes, offering little hope for transformation, reconciliation, or restoration. What makes me even angrier is when religion assists in this process of diminishing human beings. Some evangelists and some churches tear people down and rip people apart, judging and condemning. But folks, I believe religion is not meant to tear people down but to lift people high. Folks, we are called to lift people high. Remember who you are and whose you are. God has called you by name, claimed you as God's own. When you pass through the crises and challenges of life, God has said, I will be with you. Why? God says, because, because you, my family, those who I have created in my image, you, you are precious in my eyes, honored, and I love you. Remember whose and who you are, and so carry, carry on through you, God's work and intention. It's not just about you, but it is about all who are baptized. And God's intention is that we be one family, united in Christ. That was Christ's prayer, part of God's kingdom. 
as the body of Christ, we each have been gifted in different ways to reach more and more people with Christ's invitation to salvation and to share the fact that, yes, there is a place in God's family, God's kingdom for them. Today, today is a mountaintop experience a time of transfiguration where past, present, and future are united. I believe that God's expectations are high. Through the baptismal waters, we are unified with one another and with Christ. And through Christ, we are connected to God and with each other and powered by God's Spirit. Through baptism, we are a church that's part of a connectional movement and system that goes back to the pathway of John Wesley. And the connection helps us to do things far bigger than we ever thought or imagined for instance, five little small membership churches in the West Virginia Conference have just resettled a refugee family from the Ukraine. And because they are connectional, they reached across to another district, to a church that had an empty parsonage, and partnered with them for this family to have a place to live and another church in the connectional system a small membership church said well if you all can do that we can pay the electric bill for the first year and now beyond that the goal for these churches is to bring in and relocate at least two more families in the west Virginia area, refugees, and they're thinking about Syria and Turkey and what might be possible through our connection to bring life to people who have no hope and think they've lost everything in that crisis. Oh, people, we are called to lift people high and our world across the seas in our own backyard needs you and me to be the body of Christ for the world today, sharing God's affirmation of love, hope, and life. God is filled with expectation for this day and for Wyatt and for all of us. We have a God-given responsibility here as we do for every person that is baptized and every person yet to be baptized. As the waters of baptism flow over Wyatt this morning, won't you allow them to again flow over you as well? Listen, listen for God's voice. God is naming you and claiming you even now. You are my beloved, God says. With you, I am well pleased. And together in Christ, connected, gifted, and empowered by God's Spirit, let us, the church, go out from this mountaintop experience filled with expectation that God is both calling us as a family and the body of Christ to grow and to help others like Wyatt grow into a deeper discipleship, becoming more like Christ each day. And let us also remember that just as God sent Jesus, 
God is sending us, sending us out to ever expand the kingdom to invite the next person and the next person and the person after that into a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, trusting not that we can transform them, but trusting in God's transforming power to make that salvation available, a reality in each person's life. We invite to know Jesus. Oh, church, may it be so. Oh, may it be so. And may it be our prayer. Amen.